welcome to the second tutorial. In this tutorial, I will go over six different ways of calculating a power set of a set. However, in this, I will not be using sets. I'll be using lists. I think they're slightly easier to work with. So what's a set? That's a set. What is a power set? of this. Well, that should equal every possible subset. So, empty set, I got one, two, three, one, two, One, three, two, three, and one, two, three. So we'll call that power set. And let's just do length of the set, length of the power set. Okay, so the set has length 3, the power set has length 8. Okay, so let's just do the first one. Okay, so we're going to do this iteratively for the first one. Um, we need an initial result, and then for every element in this list, we have new subsets where we say subset plus the element x for the subset in result. So when we first call this, result has one element, the empty list. So what this is going to do, this is going to add this value to every value that's in result. So in this like that and then we return the results so I'll test this and then talk about more how it works um, current power set oh. okay empty set three sets with one element Three sets with two elements, one set with one element. So that looks right. There are eight of those. All right, we'll just keep going. Uh, let's see. For the second one, let's do. We're going to do all these are going to be slightly different, but they all pretty much do the same thing. So if the original is an empty list, return new set. Else, we need to define a result for s in the power set of the original from 1 to the end. So we're skipping the first element here and we're adding that first element here so 
for each of these and append them to result. And we're also going to do this same thing as here, but without appending the first element. So this is kind of the key to these recursive set generators, um, like with combinations. Uh, basically, the idea is you always remove the first element, and then you either choose to keep it or not to keep it. So it always gets removed. And here we'll return the results. So let's test this. Ah. Pass in the list first, empty list second, and we get the same thing but in a different order. But that's okay. Alright, so I'm just going to go through a few more of these. Um, let's see. This one's going to be almost identical to the one above, but it's going to be a generator function. So we're going to use yield instead of actually returning a list of values. So set three, original, new set. So that equals zero. We're going to yield new sets else for s in power set three one new set plus origin zero yield s So we're going to do the same thing here, only we're not going to attach this last one. And that should be it. Okay, so the third result gives us a generator. So we just need to convert this into a list. And there we go. That works. Okay, we're halfway done. Power set four. This is going to take a list. If length of the list is less than or equal to one, we're going to yield the list. We're going to yield the empty list next time the function is called. Otherwise, x in power set of the rest of the list, the list with uh, the head popped off, we're going to yield, uh, let's see, zeroth elements plus x, <coughs> and then we're going to yield x. So, this is a generator, we need to convert to a list, let's see what happens. One argument, okay, and there we go, same results. Power set 5, um, let's see, we're going to call this list also. That's in power set five. Pop the 
gemacht habe. Yield S plus This is zero. Let me spell yield right. And then yield this. So let's try that. This one is thanks to Tim Peters. I found this on the website. Um, it involves bitwise operators, which can be fun. Always interesting. Um, let's see. Two to the i x. So it's a tuple for i x and enumerate list. Now, for i in the range of two to the length pairs, so this pairs is going to be two to the power of i for the length of the list, so i is going to, are going to be the indices, so if it's length 3, it's going to be 2 to the 0, and then 2 to the 1, and then 2 to the 2, so the numbers should be 1, 2, 4. x is the actual element in the list. So there are three elements, three tuples in this list of pairs. So 2 to the 3 is going to be 8. So this i here is going to iterate from 0 to 7. And basically, we're going to yield a list. Uh, we're going to call this 2 to the i a mask pairs if i bitwise mask. OK. And it's in a different order, but it does work. If you're not familiar with bitwise operators, like this right here, um, here I can show you kind of what's happening. Basically, when when you iterate from two numbers like zero to seven in if you take their binary representation, you're essentially going to get every combination of indices of length 3. So, let me see if I have something in here. Just to demonstrate this. Um, let's see. Fun. Math. Uh, I'll say n equals 8. So for i in range n, we're going to say b equals string binary conversion of i. And let's just see what that gives. Okay, so here are all the binary representations of the numbers 0 through 7. Um, this is 0b at the beginning. Uh, I don't like that. So I'm going to start with the second element. Copy everything. That's better. Now we get these nice things, but we need to pad this. So 
in mod2 doesn't equal 0. We're going to say l equals int 1 times the log into the 2. Else l is going to equal int. Oh, that's not multiplication, that's addition. Log in two. And then we need to take this L. Uh, basically, this L is the, the length, uh, it's the number of zeros we need to add to pad this. Okay, so B is going to be equal to zero times L. L plus input B plus B. Hmm. You know what? That should be a minus sign. There we go. Now, all eight numbers look good. And what we can see here is if they're there are three positions. They can each be on or off, zero or one. And we're iterating through every possible combination when we go from zero up to two to three. So this is the binary representation of eight. This is the binary representation of three, two. So if you just look at how these ones and zeros are, it's, it's every combination of having them on or off. Uh, see like a, a truth table with three conditions for examples of this. So what this guy did, Tim, is he's basically iterating through all the integers, 0 to 7, and then when you do this bitwise comparator, you're essentially saying, okay, does this number have a 1 there? If it does, then the bitwise uh, and is going to say, okay, the third element is going to be included. So if it has this, the second element is included. If it has both of these, the second and third elements are going to be included. So here, first and second elements are included. Here, all elements are included. So here we've got our null set. Here we've got the original set we started with. And here we've got all combinations in between of length one and two. So that was kind of long, but I hope you enjoyed it. There are six ways to do power sets. I'm sure there are more, but this should get you going on whatever you need to be doing with power sets. So, thank you.